<laughs> God, that smells, man. It smells like Harbor Freight. Straight from China. So this is a Chin's lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery. And on Amazon, it is ridiculously cheap. It is so cheap, in fact, that distributors are messaging me, asking me what cells they're using because they do not understand the price. In this pack, I purchased on my own. It came out to a grand total of $509 with tax and shipping. And the reviews on Amazon are surprisingly good. And a few months ago, I used a smaller chintz battery and the build quality was surprisingly good, but it did not have low temp charging protection. So today we're gonna rip this thing apart and see if this has low temp charging protection and we're gonna do a capacity test. So first we need to charge it up to 100% before we do our capacity test. And right now we're charging with 71 amps, but let's try to push it to its limit. The highest amperage is 98 amps. And the terminals are staying cold and the case feels pretty good too. Let's test if the high voltage disconnect works. Oh, there we go. So now the battery is fully charged. We're using the CBA4 and amplifier system. So now the test has started, but it will take five hours. So we'll come back tonight and see what the results are. It's been five hours and it's still running. Oh, it's about to die. 1,300 watt hours already. I cannot believe how cheap this battery is and we are pulling full capacity. Every battery at this price has failed this test. Think about it. Go back in my old videos and watch. 9.7. Low voltage disconnect was 9.7 volts, which is about 2.45 per cell. So we got 104 amp hours and 1,317 watt hours. It's made by EnjoyBot Technology. What a strange name. It has UL certification, really? Maybe the cells, but if this pack is UL certified at this price, that is insane. I don't know. So it passed the capacity test. Now we need to rip it apart. Oh. I work out. Holy crap. actually pretty good. The BMS placement and cell configuration is very similar to the smaller model. The balance lead connections are really nice and it's well organized. <gasps> this is a temperature sensor. Oh darn it. Yeah this is a high temp sensor unfortunately. This is the same exact sensor that's on the smaller model. Yep they don't have a low temp sensor anywhere. But everything else is great. I mean like I said with the last model the build quality is nice. Look at the organization of the cables and the crimps and the heat shrink. Everything looks really good. If they could just add that low temp sensor that would be great. And why would you have a high temp sensor on the cells? I understand on the BMS on the FETs when you have over temperature because you're pushing too much current for too long. But on the cells, I don't think so. The thermal stability of this chemistry is quite high and you can run them at higher temperatures, no problem. Especially for solar, overheating a lithium iron phosphate is not a concern. Maybe an electric vehicle, but not in a large solar battery. So let's just test it out anyways and see how well it works. So right now we're charging with 10 amps. You have to get this thing really hot to trigger it. Or maybe it's because there's so much glue on it and it acts as an insulator. Uh-oh. I just melted it. And it says it's triggered at 75 degrees Celsius. That's just so high. Like when would the cells ever get to that temperature? Even if you had a hot spot on the bus bars, for example, the thermal mass of these cells would just absorb it right up. Maybe it's for discharging only and not charging. But who cares? It's just a high temp sensor. There's no point in me even doing this test. I just like to do it for fun. So the Ampere Time battery, which is similar to the Chins, their website, their product description, everything is the same. So I'm assuming they are the same company or owned by the same entity. But now that we have this one torn apart, let's go get the Ampere Time and see what BMS they're using and how they compare. And here is the Ampere Time. 
check it out the same sticker same bms same exact 75 degrees celsius temperature sensor same pack design same foam so these are absolutely made by the same manufacturer and they're just simply relabeled i don't know why they have two different listings they even have the same product lineup so i don't know what the difference is and the barcodes are the same too by the way this one's a frankenstein battery because i had to add a bunch of wires myself because i damaged this one but yeah chins and ampere time are the same thing but I was able to trigger this sensor, so let's try it again. Oh, there we go. I think it's all this glue that's preventing it from working on this one, but still a worthless sensor in my opinion. So yeah, nothing different. Good build quality. I like the build quality on Chins and Ampere Time. They just do not have low temp charging protection. And that's the only thing I dislike about these packs. But not having low temp charging protection is considered an instant failure in my books. So if you do buy one of these, you need to build a system that has a solar charge controller with low temp charging protection, such as a Victron. Or if you live in a warm climate, or if you're gonna have these indoors, you probably don't have to have the low temp charging protection. Please understand that if you charge these cells when they're frozen, especially quickly, they'll be permanently damaged forever. Something else I like is even though these are a significantly different size pack, they're very similar in design. I like the consistency. That just shows that these are professionally built. Sometimes these battery companies just throw batteries together with whichever cells or BMS that they can find, whatever they can find for very cheap. But it doesn't seem to be the case with these. I bought this one about three or four months ago and it looks the same as this one. With the Ruxu, I was getting different cells, different wiring configuration, different foam. And I personally do not like that. It's hard to recommend a product when you don't know what the internals are gonna be. But in this instance, we do have consistency and that's very good, especially at this price point. Also, we have hydraulic crimps on the main terminal. And the balance leads are just perfectly connected on both batteries. And adding your own low temp charging protection is not that difficult. So I would say that this is a pretty darn good bargain. And I have not seen these out of stock. So unlike SOK and the other batteries, which I still like SOK, okay better you can service the cells the designs better the bms is not slapped onto a cell it has a metal case low temp charging protection so yeah i would still go with an sok if you can get your hands on one but for a budget battery that is very accessible to the public on amazon this thing is pretty darn good but keep in mind you can still build a diy battery for cheaper than this battery so even though this thing is ridiculously cheap you can still diy it for even cheaper anyways i hope you guys like the video and i will talk to you soon. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below and yeah, have a great day. Bye.